What's going on guys? Welcome back to Denver Beer and Oil. Today we're going to be doing fun things with race car things. These two beautiful little ladies are S54s. For those of you who are not familiar with this, that is an inline six, 3.2 liters, revs to 8,000 RPMs, is that right? Yep. Revs to about 8,000 RPMs. Uh, came stock in the E46 M3, which that was the M3 made from I think 02. 2000 until 2008? Six. Six? 2006. So this is pretty much a full-on race engine. It's really cool. Uh, it's got forged crack rods, 11 and a half to one compression, uh, dual Vanos, which is variable valve timing, not lift, not the same as VTEC. Um, coil on plug ignition, individual throttle bodies. I mean, th these motors are super badass. Uh, they're very high strung. So they're kind of a pain in the ass to maintain. They've got manual valve tappets, which means that there are no hydraulic lifters. You have to adjust the valves like every, what, 15,000 miles, I think it is. Yep. By the way, this is Blake. Blake is a M3 guy, specifically S54 guy. He loves this stuff. So he's, he's down here helping us out today. So basically what's going on here is this is the engine out of the black E46 M3 that Chris bought a little while back and decided to spin the rod bearings on. blew that motor up literally the day that video was taken. What I was gonna do in light of the, the spun rod bearings was combine this motor with this motor. Before we started filming, Blake and I went ahead and tore this whole thing apart. Uh, I thought this motor had bent valves, but it turns out it just had a blown head gasket. Uh, well, that's good. This one's a little blown. That one's completely blown. You can see that the gasket's toast. So the head is over there. It's completely fine. We'll, we'll get some more footage of uh, how to do this, but this is just a cool motor, and we figured you guys might want to see what it looks like on the inside, how to disassemble it. So the, the reason these two motors are out of the car, aside from the fact that this has blown rod bearings, or I'm sorry, spun rod bearings, I was planning on doing an S54 swap into my E30 M3. I still very well may, uh, but Cap Jim over at Castle Performance has talked me into doing an N54 swap. I guess this is my little teaser to you guys that we are going to be the first people to really in-depth document and videotape an N54 swap into an E30 and more specifically an E30 M3. Really just waiting on parts to start getting here. As soon as parts start getting in here, I'll get a donor car for that. But if that doesn't happen, S54 is what it's gonna be because I've already got everything we need. So I'm gonna make one good S54. This is going to a buddy of mine who bought it a while back and I've been too busy or too lazy to get to this until now. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, so let's get to the fun part. Blake and I are gonna start tearing this thing down. We're gonna show you all the cool stuff these motors do, all the different features. So let's get started. Let's tear this thing apart. So we found a pretty cool feature after we pulled the headers off. Uh, this particular engine has oil cooled exhaust. Oh, there it is. Mm, that's all from this one. So that's good. It's a good thing uh, my buddy's rebuilding this. It's a sign of a healthy engine, right? Oh, it's definite. So it looks like cylinders six and one, uh, and three, and four, uh, and five. Really, the only one that's not leaking by is number two. Headers are off. Uh, oil accumulator tube is off of the head. So these engines are equipped with ITBs, um, but also they have an electronic throttle pedal. So it's all fly by wire, which is kind of cool. It makes it a little bit more of a pain to swap. You can convert it to uh, drive by cable if you choose to do so. They sell kits for it. I think DAC sells a kit, maybe Turner Motorsports. There's a bunch of people that sell conversion kits if you're doing a swap. Um, but yeah, ITBs are cool. Vroom vroom, back to work. Okay, so um, we've got all the headers off. We've got the wiring harness off, idle air control valve, the linkage for the throttle bodies. At this point, we're pulling the Vanos off, which if you're not familiar, is again, the variable valve timing system on the E46 M3. So 2000 to 2006. And I'll show you how that works right now. It's pretty cool. It's leading from the hand, it's always cool. So basically you have two splines and oil pressure is 
provided by this disc right here. So the cam spins this pump. It's it's got uh, it's got a, a rotary oil pump. It spins at very 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 high velocities and super super high pressure. It's uh, what like fifteen thousand psi. Yep. I think at idle. Yeah. So extremely high pressure is provided to both of these hubs. And then, dependent upon what throttle position and engine RPM you're at, the ECU will tell these solenoids, well, there's a big brick of solenoids that bolt to the bottom here, which allow valving inside to open or close accordingly, and it can change exhaust cam timing and intake cam timing independently of one another, uh, plus or minus 20 degrees a piece, I think. Does that sound right to you? I think so. Okay. I think so. And the way that that operates is basically the oil pressure will either lessen to allow that to retard or greaten to allow the cam to advance these splines you can see that they're curved so as it as that as this goes in or out it will change the advancement or the retard of well it'll change the cam timing is what it changes so it's a pretty cool system it's very basic um, but unfortunately on this motor it is an absolute pain in the ass to rebuild and it is an even bigger pain in the ass to get the timing perfect so if you're working on an S54 and you're timing it, make sure once you get everything right and you're 100% sure it's right to turn it over three or four times, check the timing again, you're going to have to reset it again. That's guaranteed. Uh, reset it again, lock it down, do it again until you can rotate it back to top dead center with the locking pin in and get both of your pins in the cam. So right now, just even from looking at this, I can tell that this motor is not timed right. So these holes right here are designed for the cam timing tool, which is a bridge that sits over like this. And then there's a pin that drops down vertically through each cam. So you can see the angle of this one is not even remotely the same as the angle of that one. Meaning the cam timing is off on this. With almost every used S54, this is gonna be the number one thing you should check, always. Go through the Vanos, reset the cam timing, get this locked down. This is where the S54 makes all of its power. In light of that, uh, Blake and I are going to go ahead and remove the Vanos and we'll show you a little bit more in depth how it works and then we'll get all the cam gears off and I'll go through some wear items that you guys should replace. So one thing I forgot to mention when removing the Vanos and when you're removing these splines, it's a seven millimeter and a 10 millimeter, but it's reverse thread. So tighten is loosen. It's righty loosey, lefty tighty. Just to visualize how this works, so the oil pressure on this changes, and then this cam, as you can see, its position of advancement changes relative to the Vanos. So, removing it, this is what it looks like. Oh, careful. These little guys like to rattle. Uh, I would very highly recommend looking up Naturally Agitated on Instagram. He is the king of Vanos. Well, you are as well, I guess, at this point. Um, either one of these fellas, naturally agitated, good friend of mine, Mike Cotter, he is the king of Vanos on these engines. So if you guys have an S54 and you want to know what to do to it or how to fix it, talk to him. He is the best at S54s as far as induction systems. He can tell you about throttle bodies, cams, all the Vanos stuff, anything you want to know, Mike knows. So hit him up if you guys are doing S54 stuff. Two things that I can see right now that you would want to replace. These are the stock cam bolts. So if these look like hex bolts, chances are they're stock, especially if they're gold like this and they've got oil tarnishment on them, they're stock. You're gonna to want to replace those because they break all the time. These engines are known to do this and when they break, you will bend all of your valves. Uh, the other thing that breaks all the time on these motors is this timing chain tensioner right here. The bottom section of it, we won't be able to see it right now, but when we get the head off, maybe we'll be able to see it. The bottom section breaks off of it and it'll either go down into the engine and rattle around, or it's, it's just not good. Mm -hmm. So change this, they make a billet tensioner, which is really awesome. It's made out of, uh, I believe, billet Viton or extremely strong and you're never gonna have to replace it in the life of your engine, most likely. Your engine will need to rebuild before that thing's bad. Okay, now that we've got that done, next thing on the list to get this head off is unfortunately removing the cams. <laughs> you cannot get all the cam bolts out without removing, or I'm sorry, all the head bolts out without removing the cams. All the exhaust ones you can get to, but you cannot, well, with the exception of the front two, uh, but you cannot get to the intake ones. So in order to get the head off, you gotta take the cams off. It's one, another reason why this motor is such a time consuming labor monster. You can't just do a quick four hour, five hour head gasket on it. It's going to be a 10 to 12 hour job, even if you know what you're doing. Well, let's get started.
Okay, so if you're removing the cams on one of these motors, you wanna make sure, because the cams are hollow, believe it or not, BMW wanted to keep rotating mass at a minimum, to only do a quarter turn at a time and alternate. So the way I do it is like you can see, I just, well, I'm doing a half turn, but I alternate up and down, and then I go to the other one, and then alternate up and down. You just zigzag your way doing a half or a quarter turn, do it all the way down until these, so all of the tension is released off of your valve springs and you drop the socket in the motor. Hey, I got it, go fish. In conclusion, cams are hollow. Alternate the nut that you're loosening. So I go top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. And when I get to the other side, I switch. Boom, and it's super annoying. I'm re actually really glad we have two people doing this because it takes forever if you're doing it by yourself. How do you know when tension's off? Uh, you'll be able to feel that the nut is completely loose and it's not like there, there won't be any resistance on it okay. um, now don't be fooled uh, each valve or each cylinder moreover will be different than the next so you want to make sure that there is no tension on any of them so just as I was talking about before look what we found broken timing chain tensioner very 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 common I would say almost 100% on these engines. So change that, buy the billet one, save yourself an engine. At this point, Blake and I have torn all the cam caps off. We're done with the quarter turn of death. So we can actually remove the cams now. And the nice thing about BMW, and they've been doing this forever, is they actually label all the cam caps. So if you're not super careful with these, it's okay. I mean, be gentle with them, but they are all labeled. So E in German, has something to do with intake. I forget what the word is. <laughs> word is, word is uh, the exhaust one is is A, and I think that's like Ausfert, which means exhaust. Anyway, fun little fact. So the E is not for exhaust. So it's backwards. An easy way to remember it is E is not exhaust, it's intake. Just, e is just intake. It. It's E intake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, the other thing when removing the cans, obviously be very careful with them, but you do not want to damage that ring right there. That is what the cam sensor reads, and it is very, very delicate, so do not dent it. Now we have access, well, almost have access to all of the head bolts. The last thing we need to do to get this head off is to remove this right here, the front bearing journals, and also the oil supply for the Vanos. Pull that off real quick, and then we'll rip this head off. I said the timing chain tensioner broke before. I didn't realize to what extent. If you take a look in there, it is completely broken in half. And believe it or not, this motor still ran pretty damn good and pulled hard. So it's kind of a testament to how beefy these motors are. Definitely, definitely, definitely replace that. I'm actually fairly surprised it was running. But that also explains as to why the cams weren't timed in unison. Um, but lastly, the, the other thing you wanna make sure that you don't do is turn this head upside down when you remove it, if you're removing it. Also, if you are doing a valve adjustment on it, make sure every single one of these little oil galleries is plugged with something. Hey Blake, why do you wanna do that? <laughs> you do not wanna drop a shim. It's super lame. It's very lame. So <laughs> I'll show you just for some visualization what we're talking about here. Like I said, these, these are full race motors, so they have manual valve tappets. So each one of these little hockey pucks here is an engine destroyer, and there's 24 of them ready to destroy your engine. So do not drop one of these in your engine. And every time you do a valve adjustment, count them. Do not lose one of these. Another easy visualization, if you are doing valve clearances, you can actually do it with the cams in. And what you wanna do is you can, there's a little place, so you're gonna get the cam lobe facing directly up, and then you can slip a magnet in here and just suck this little hockey puck up, and then you just do math between what you want and what your actual is, and you figure out what your new shim is. So for example, if you have like 23 thousandths and you want it at 10 thousandths, then obviously you need to add 13 thousandths to your shim in order to get your valve clearances right. And I believe 10 thousandths actually is the clearance on this, so. Taking head bolts out now, uh, and normally you want to do them in the reverse pattern that they're installed. However, in this particular instance, this head is going to be machined, and I'm not particularly worried about it getting warped because it needs to be machined flat anyway. So I'm just going front to back. What I was gonna show you is the other three bolts you need to remove in order to get this head out. So bolt number one, is up front by my navel. There's a bolt right here that goes through for the secondary, well, this is the timing chain guide, not the tensioner. So you gotta remove that bolt, and then there's two little five millimeter Allens 
at the front here. And then you just have all your head bolts front to back. And once those suckers are out, this head is free to roam the lands. Does anybody want some head? All right. Oh, that one came off way easier than the oh. other one. Oh, and it is oh. full to the brim of oil. Oh, wow. Nice. Let's sit this on that uh, right next to the cams on the, the rug very gently. These cylinders most likely should get some new rings. Although it's a good thing this engine's being rebuilt. The two, judging by the two cylinders I can actually see. <laughs> Dude, they, they might not have been lying. This engine might have just been rebuilt. Yeah, it's got Aside it's from the cylinder ridge. You can see some of the, the hone marks. But the pistons look brand, like there's no carbon on them at all. Yeah. Like at all. Yeah. So maybe they did a backyard rebuild on this thing. <laughs> yeah. But it didn't get machined because you can still see the ridge. So other cool features of this engine, since we've already got it apart in the pan off. Um, well, I can also show you this. Yeah, and some power steering fluid into your... Oh, it's okay. Okay. It's all oil. It's going to be hot. So, Forged cracked rods. So you can see these are what's called cracked, which basically just means, let's see, how did they do this? I forget. Isn't it centered? One solid piece and then they, yeah, yeah. But I think they do it with temperature or with mm, acoustics. I can't remember, but regardless, um, cracked rods, very cool, very strong. This, this is actually the strongest form of rod you can buy aside from probably like an H beam. Um, the crank definitely is a little scored, so it's gonna need to be polished for sure. Um, but one of the cool things is that it actually has piston squirters. So if you look down here, yep, get some, yep, there it is. Or maybe go on your side so you can see it. Yep, get the nozzle. Oh, get yeah. the schnoz in there. Oh, girl. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so anyway, those are, uh, those are piston squirters, and the purpose of those is to help keep the piston cool at high RPMs, aid in lubrication, and just, it's, they're awesome. Um, also, another really cool feature of this motor is that it has a dual sump pickup. So if you're in a corner, if, if there's any G-forces, if you're braking hard, pretty much no matter what scenario, BMW designed this engine to be able to get oil consistently, no matter what. Well, I say that, but I guess <laughs> the caveat to that is unless you have a blown oil filter, which actually, here, come here. You can see some of it left. I picked a lot of it off, but this is all oil filter particulate that's just left over from cleaning the pickup off. But I mean, it's, it's everywhere. You can see it, it's all over the engine. Yeah, anyway, I hope you guys liked this video. Stay tuned for some more reassembly type things and also the N54 swap in conjunction with Caster Performance. That's gonna be happening in the E30 M3. But as always, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for support, guys.